I think we got everything in order here. Hello, who is that? Hi, Berlin. Hi, Bishop. <laughs> Mother Berlin, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, I'm great. <laughs> thank you, how are you? Yeah, thank you, thank you for the notes. Thank you for the note. That was very nice of you. And um, we, we had a good time yesterday, didn't we? <laughs> yesterday, oh my God, awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, <laughs> I am actually putting your notes I will add uh, uh, some other notes that can be forwarded that I wrote down myself. That will be what will be featured on the Chapel of Science and Wonders this morning. Wow. So what you type, what you typed will be in there. So when you go there, you see your work, what we did yesterday. That was just so amazing. That was very beautiful. That was good. Yeah, are you home today? Yes. That's good, that's good, that's good. I I know that if you have opportunity you will want you will want what happened yesterday to happen every day. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yes, yes. Yeah, well, we'll have a little meeting, you and I, um this morning. Try and call me. Give give some time after the conference. I want to have a very important meeting with you, okay? All right. Is there anyone uh, on the conference call that want to uh, talk to me? By the way, if you want to call in during this conference, um, the, the, the phones are off so that we can have the conference without interference. Only my phone is working. Um, so, Joey, I will want to be in touch with you uh, this morning. Um, that would be very, very nice. Now, let me begin by announcing to every one of you this morning, beginning on the 1st of August, which day is the 1st of August? Is it tomorrow? First day of August, is it tomorrow, Saturday? Yes, Saturday. Yes, Saturday. I am saying this before the entire world. I have been summoned so a seven day, seven days of being in the altar and sitting on the mat. Uh, for those of you who will call, um, but then um, the next 48 hours, the next 48 hours, very important. Um, if you call me, um, there is also a need now, let me tell you how this works. There are some of you that I've prayed for. We've not yet seen. Uh, uh, we've not yet seen. Let me put it this way. If you've been praying about a particular issue and you have not seen answer to such prayers, well, there are different ways of looking at issues. God has summoned me to look at a particular scripture which says, Jesus said that there are certain things that will not go away except by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is one of the most powerful ways. Prayer, fasting, and meditating on the Word of God and speaking to the problem is one of the most powerful ways that Jesus solved problem. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob many a time wants a human being to do the sacrifice. What I mean by sacrifice is to separate him or herself for certain numbers of days to be in God's presence. Moses did not go up on the mountain and within two minutes he came back with the law. No. He was there 40 days and 40 nights, and then he brought the law back, the Ten Commandments. So for most of you who want a mosquito uh, um, prayer for an elephant answer, 
Life is not like that. The supernatural doesn't work that way. There is a place that God is going to summon a human being to come to be with him for several days before an issue will be resolved. But that's just the way it is. So, beginning on the 1st of August, 2015 to the 7th of August, I will be between and ministering to people every three, three hours. I will be sitting on the, on the mat, what we call sitting on the mat, and also ministering on the um, altar. I, 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 because, because I'm the one sitting here and ministering to you, I cannot show you the new altar where the thing is happening. People have already started to call in or email in um, their, their, what do we call it, or email in their, uh, their, their prayer request. Um, this is how you are to do it. Send it to me directly. Idikai Mary 2000, Idikai Mary 2000 at gmail.com. But it will be better that you call in from wherever you are in the world. Call. If you are international, that's you live outside the US and Canada, call 702 992 0792. If you live within the US and Canada, call, um, uh, call 316 243 2967. And talk to me about um, talk to me about what the issues. It must be an urgent issue or an issue that has been in your life for a long time that you want it to be resolved once and for all. Also, I will encourage you to attach an offering. It's a seven days of non-eating of fasting from my own. It's a sacrifice I'm making for those of you who want me to undertake such journey for you for seven days. So it's not a time that you should just call me because you are my friend or because you are family. Just don't keep away. I want to go up there and bring something for you. If you call me, call me because you want something very important from me. For example, like when Berlin calls, she wants me to, to, to practice meditation with her, to mentor her. If you call me, call me because you want me to mentor you. Don't call me just for the fun of it. You must have a specific need. Because that's very important. So be also be prepared that I might be talking to you and suddenly I'll tell you that the father needs me and I have to go. Every three hours, I will shut down everything and I will be at the altar. After that, I will be on the floor with all the prayer requests. Also, we are going to roll out. I'm going to roll out every prayer request we've received in this ministry that people sent to me by mail will be rolled out and piled up high. They will be there till, the, till we enter next year. They will be there. So this is going to be very, very important days for me. After the seven days, I do not know when again that I know, I already feel it, that I will be summoned to be there for 21 days. And after that, before the year ends, I will be summoned to be there for 40 days. I know that. So that's how this thing happened. That's how this thing works. That's how it works. Um, there is a place for sacrifice. Without sacrifice, there is no answer. God will never respond to the big things or to the difficult thing until there is a sacrifice by a human being. And that is where I come in. That's where I come in as a bridge builder. Well, um, I have been asked that um, if you want me to undertake such a thing for you, send in a very good offering. 
we are looking forward to people sending in 300 500 200 i mean it depends on what you really have do not go into debt to try to please god don't do that so we are looking forward if you are if you want me to do the seven days prayer and fasting for you go ahead and send an offering to it an offering is what we call a protection seed it is what opens the door for the supernatural world to listen to your case no case will be listened to until there is an offering attached to it that i know but many people don't know so please make sure that you attach a good offering to such a thing so for seven days i will not eat and drink i will be before god to seek his face and i will be dealing with demonic entities with with powerful domineering spirits in the supernatural in the second heaven and in hell and on this earth and against human spirits and human thoughts and imaginations curses all kind of stuff that has been against you i'll be dealing with those things it's a very violent time that is going to happen so i need um, you to be praying for me as i begin this journey tomorrow saturday i am also going to make a separate video about this and put it out there for people to be aware that they should send their love offering and call me i will take down in writing and then i'll place it at the altar when i finish writing it here i'll take it over there the hammer will be rolled out and the chains and the keys will all be rolled out so that's how serious it's gonna be so if you call me and i do not answer know that i am at the altar or i'm at the floor when i'm done when they release me i will i will call you and we will talk and uh, it, will, it will continue like that every three hours i mean i'm praying every three hours i'm praying which means that i will not have sleep for seven days that's the meaning of it i will not have real sleep for seven days and then after after the seven days i will be leaving to the east coast the, we are going to have a Holy Ghost one-on-one -on -one meeting with Bishop Edekai Mary for those of you in the East Coast. So after the seven days, three, three hours prayers on the altar and on the floor for you, I will be leaving for the East Coast. So those of you in, Mary, in um, Virginia, Maryland, New York, Delaware, D.C., uh, where is it? Massachusetts, all those areas. The East Coast area. I will be in Bowie, Maryland from the 13th, 14th, and 15th. I'll be at Bowie, Maryland. It's a centrally located place um, for people either to fly in or to drive in. You can take the train. So we'll also have a separate video about that that will come out today. So that's what will be happening um, for those of you in the East Coast. It's not uh, a conference of everybody coming together uh, because that's not possible yet. But this one is for people to meet me one-on-one. -on -one. There will be other people with me um, to assist me, to help in case people begin to fall all over the place and all kind of manifestation begin to happen because that is what is going to happen um so 13 14 15th of august i will be in bowie maryland and i will be i will be telling you guys um in the video that will come out concerning the holy ghost one-on-one -on -one, powerful holy ghost one-on-one -on -one meeting with bishop uh, uh Imeri. Uh, the partners coming to meet me one on one please come either you come alone or you come with your husband or you come with your wife or you come with your children come with your church members you want to come with your business partners however you want to do it please come 
to come. The next time that things will begin to have, I'm, I'm having, I'm going out to have a feel. I'm, I'm going out to have a feel to know whether it's the right time for me to begin to travel out for conferences. See, it's one thing to hear God give visions to people and to you about um, um, the different things he wants you to do. It's one thing to have visions of stadiums filled with millions of people receiving healings and so on. Uh, but it's also another thing for you to wait to know whether it's the right time. So after how many years? In 2012, this is my first time of really, really um, going out to begin to have a feel for which way the wind is going to blow. Because until you move, you never know. Until you get out there, you never really know. So it's always one thing to get prepared, God prepare you, and then you go out there. That will help you to know whether it's time for certain things to happen or not. That's how this thing works. It's just like marriage, you 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 go into relationships with people and so on. But after a while, you have to go back inside and look at where the Spirit is leading you to know, is it time? Who is it? How is it? What's the location? Same thing with starting ministry. See, that's, that's the thing. You have to know these things. If you don't, you will fail. So for some people, they just rush in. But the point is, is God in, into it with you right now? Is it the time? There is time for everything. As we are going to see in the scripture this morning when we read it. So I want to, uh, to share this with you. That I will be in Bowie. Maryland. Please find out if you live in the East Coast where Bowie, Maryland is. And in the in the video that I will want you to check sometime this afternoon that will be coming out concerning the East Coast one-on-one -on -one with Bishop Idikai Mary. Um, you will see uh, I will announce and also today, maybe by the end of today, you will see the website will automatically change with and some of the new things that will happen and the venue and all of that. So I will want you to get prepared to, uh, to come and uh, visit with me and I will be ministering to you one on one. The next time that we will be doing some of these things, the conferences, it will be where everybody come together in the East Coast or in the West Coast or in the Midwest or in the in the, in the in the south and all of that see as you grow socially famous and so on and so forth then then and as god begin to direct you also in how to do it uh, then you go so it's not enough just to go out there and you want to do something because others are doing it you have to be very careful that the power of god is there waiting for you it's not just your anointing some people just think because they have the anointing, that's enough. No. Until the glory meets the anointing, there is no miracle. And if there are miracles, they are just, well, you are, I'm looking for something permanent for people. If you have a job, it's a permanent job. If you are married, it's a happy marriage. If you begin to make money, it will never stop. Things like that. So I'm not looking for, um, I'm not looking for, yeah, welcome. I'm not I'm not looking for just little things to happen to you. I want the big things to happen to you that will bring glory to God forever and ever. So that's what will be happening in the East Coast one on one with Idikai Mary. Um I look forward to seeing you guys on the thirteenth, fourteenth and fifteenth of August in Mer in Bowie, Maryland. Please come out there. Um, after that, we will go to somewhere else. I mean, I'll have to come back and prepare for the next place that I'll be going to. I'm not sure whether it's California or whether it will be Georgia. All right. Let's go into uh, the ministration for today. But remember, those of you who just came in, remember that on the 1st of August, 
which is tomorrow Saturday we are beginning the three three hours it's just me I'm not asking anybody to join uh, this is not the one that people are asked to join this is me this is me being asked to do it for you and remember to attach a big offering a good offering generous offering to asking me to go there for you all right let's begin um let's begin the ministry for the ministry for this morning people have got to remember that friday morning is healing the healing service is on fridays and the deli uh, friday morning friday evening is the uh, deliverance saturday morning that is tomorrow is our church service chapel of signs and wonders and saturday night is winners and achievers meetings or conference so let's go straight to what we have to do for this um for this uh morning but before i do that let me welcome you and tell you thank you for joining me is there anybody that has a question concerning what i've just said or want some clarification please ask Uh, no, no, people, people can call, people can call and if I'm, if I'm not at the altar and on the, on the floor during this time, I'll pick up the phone and answer and be ministering to people. This is a time of ministering to people, please. Uh, is that Christine? Yes, this is Christine. Christine, are you calling all the way from Nairobi, Kenya? Yes, I'm from Nairobi, I'm calling from Nairobi. You are kidding me, you are serious. So you you love your bishop like this? Is that is that so? Who is listening? Which of my kids are listening? Talk to me. Which of my children are listening? <laughs> I tell them how they don't want them to make noise for me. <laughs> who who are there? Who are there? Is Eddie there? Yeah. Who? No, I don't know this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I told them to go away because I don't want the church. Oh, who is who who are in the house? Evelyn. <laughs> okay. Um yes. there were two people that just announced their names. Um Mr. V, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I tried to reach you yesterday. I couldn't. I think I left you a message. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Thank you. Yeah, I guess I, I just listened to the message this morning. I'll call you. Okay, okay. Thanks. Try I won the three way call. Um between me and you and your and your is it your brother that would be nice yeah, the brother -in -law. okay your brother-in-law that would be nice who again just came in now is that gillian hey, what's the life, hi hi partner hi. <laughs> las vegas love love how are you <laughs> Oh, you are at the airport? Well, I had to drop my son off. So I'm headed to work and listening. Oh, okay. Oh, Daryl is back. Daryl is back. Well, t tell him that I will be in touch with him. I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I will be responding back to your mail. I saw I saw your, your, your text message. I'll be responding back to it. Okay. That lady doesn't stand a chance. Just tell her nobody messes with my daughters and get away free. No way. <laughs> All right. Good. Now let's go to um, the the. Uh, let's go in. Christine, thank you very much that um, uh, you you travel all the way to uh, to to Kenya and you are calling in all the way from Nairobi. That's amazing. People of God, let me also seize this time to make an appeal. In case you find the crowdfunding, the, there will be something like a crowdfunding that um, might come up. It will be mainly for my ministry in Kenya. I have been doing everything to get away, not to get involved in ministry in Kenya for the time being, in order for me to develop more and more the ministry here in the u.s 
and to get into him but the more i do that the more i know that there are certain things that you just have to join um a man by name of kennedy and a woman by name christine and um, the daughter edina etc george william these are all guys uh, who have a um, big thing going on in kenya recently my ministry has gotten registered in kenya so i'm just sharing with all my partners and family and friends and those that love the ministry and are watching to be aware of this my ministry has been registered in kenya and there is there are a couple of men that come together that want to work with me they are not they don't want their own ministry they want to work with me till the rest of their lives which is exactly what i wanted now they have brought me a lot of children and uh, women who have gone through abuse and their children so in, so we will need to begin to do something about orphan the orphanage out there and also there are orphanages already established that they've asked me to come and take over all that want to partner with me and they look up to me as a father to provide to give spiritual guidance you guys know that i do not believe in telling people i'll give you moral support i will i'll be praying for you and they send you books and cities i don't believe in that i mean those things have their place i believe in giving people money i believe in giving people cars i believe in giving people houses clothing beautiful things for people to have a life in this physical world i believe that if you want to go to heaven then start going to heaven right here on the earth there's no use telling me that until you go to heaven before you eat the best food be happy have the best clothing have the best luxury you need to live like in heaven on the earth give us this day our daily bread our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so why do you want to live on earth as though it is in hell why maybe we should we should go on that today we should go on that today how do people in heaven lives how do they live why is it that he said to us that the will of the father the author of every good thing and idea that his will be done on the earth as it is in heaven then what is his will the will of the father is that every good thing that is happening in heaven should happen to you on the earth it's as simple as that maybe i'm not gonna leave what i prepared this is that's why i love the holy spirit when he pushed me into something i go with it that's that's why i'm successful in ministry i'm not bound by laws <laughs> christine you are laughing yeah that's why you love me you know it uh, people are let me tell you something i know you love your you love that tea king people of god she love king sawayan you put you put a semi truck load of king sawayan and tea this woman will sit down and eat until you have to drag her butt off i've done i've done everything there are some people that have done everything to scare them i have beaten them with my mouth to make them go they let them leave me alone they say no way i have tried to tight them to tight them as an offer them as an offering to other ministries to take them no way they always come back they say no we are not good see i've done everything i've done everything i've even annoyed them purposely annoyed them put it button just to make them go to somebody else no way they don't want to go so i gave up that's how i know that the the, the person loves me the person want to stay with me so what can i do i just let them stay
I know, I know, I know. I didn't say you should go tell the children that, you know. You know, they are adults. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I know. I know. I know. People of God, this woman has some kids. So we decided to divide the kids, you know. So I took the one that will give her a hard time. <laughs> I took two that will give her a hard time and I left the one that are meek and gentle to be hard. And the rough ones are mine, so we shared equally. And uh, she didn't like that, but he walked out of the cliff on me. <laughs> he walked out of the cliff on me. That's how this thing goes, you know. I know that if I tell, if I tell some of these people something, and she come and tell them something else, those who will be on her side, I left them to be with her. Those who will disagree with her, those are my favorite. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. So, yeah, so let me let me repeat something. I am I am looking for um I need people to put to add more money to what we have now. We are not saying that we don't have money there for uh, the ministry in Kenya. People are giving and you need to join to give. Your name, your name, your name. I know, I know. Most of these pastors from Kenya wanna come down here to the US to visit with me, to begin to have formal meetings with me, and and to give this thing a boost and so on. So there are people all over the world. Okay, that's good. People have got you heard it. Obama was just in Kenya a few days ago, and um, and that is making it gonna make it very easy for uh, this for these partners and the people who are gonna be also running the ministry with me out in Kenya. That will make it possible. I want you to have a heart for little kids, kids who have been abandoned women who have been so much abused. I have so much passion. My thesis that I wrote when I was in seminary was about, you can imagine how young I was, and the Spirit of God was moving me while the rest of my colleagues were writing about doctrines, philosophy, politics. Do you guys know what I wrote about and submitted to the college? I wrote about how to help women and children. That's what I wrote about. I can't even tell why I did that. That's what I wrote about. And what I wrote and also submitted to the board of examiners of the Presbyterian Church in my own locality, my presbytery, those who examine us, to see whether we are qualified to be licensed after our education, our college education, for us to begin to become pastors. I also wrote about ministering. So you see, I'm revealing a secret to you guys here. You see, you have to go back to the first thing the Holy Spirit was staring you to do. What did I write about? It's about... How do pastors minister to children, to the elderly who are who are left to, to die, abandoned? You see, there are some places, there are no nursing homes. Elderly people are left to die and to be accused of being witches. That's what I wrote about. How to, how to help those kind of people. That's why part of my ministry is building nursing homes and assisted living facilities. That's why I have people like Berlin with me. She doesn't know that that's why I follow her because she has a gift. She's a beautiful woman. She has a gift. She has a brain. That's why I follow people like her or Zainab. You know, that's why I follow people like Zainab. People like Nicole, people like uh, uh, Sylvia. I mean, 
people like Pam, people like Baby, my sister, Marsha, my wonderful darling, all these people, someone as beloved as Alexis, who manages doctors and nurses, I follow them because I already know that I have a cream of people already given to me for such ministries. Christine, I told her to go into charity. She's already right. She's already been involved with United Nations. People of God, that's who she is. That's why I told her, get out of yeah, get out of healing and deliverance. You have no business being in healing and deliverance. I have business in it, but not you. I represent you there. I mean, you can you can have church and let people run it for you, but your job is charity. And she went into it. She listened to the prophecy that I gave her, and her daughters. And her son way on the phone line that day, all the way from Kenya, listening to what I was telling their mom. You can imagine that how serious it was. And when 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 the conference was over, the daughter and the son said to Mama, You better listen to that man of God. He loves you. He's confirming what God told you a long time ago. Because the job of prophets is to perform. Perform. I'm not going into what performance means here. That is like um, healings and miracles and all. My follow, there are different kinds of prophets. There are prophets who just talk. There are prophets who see. There are those who hear. There are those who see and hear at the same time. I see. I hear. I perform. So the works of prophet is to perform, proclaim, reveal, all those kind of things, and then confirm. So perform, proclaim, reveal, and confirm. That's the job of real prophets. Immediately, I said that to Christine. Is that is that the video on YouTube? And what happened? Somebody immediately she got off that phone and she obeyed what the Lord told her through me. Somebody wrote her. Somebody wrote her a good check. And she was able to use that check to to re, uh, re, re rediscover, reaffirm, and begin to put the ministry of charity together once again. That's why she's in Kenya right now, trying to make sure that the ministry God called her into, she doesn't deviate from it, especially after hearing a word of prophecy coming from me. And now God has called me into the same thing that I was writing about when I was a young, a young, a young pastor, writing my thesis. That's why in the churches that I used to run back in Africa, if your daughter is pregnant, or your son makes somebody pregnant, or your 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 member members of your family, somebody is pregnant and all of that, you know, in some places they are quarrel because. They were not yet married. So whether they are married or the pregnancy happened outside marriage, I don't care. Babies are not a problem. So why are you putting a lot of hell on a poor woman who pregnancy happened? You are going to put her more with more guilt and shame. And sometimes that so much stress will result in miscarriage and problems and, and, and health issues. Leave the poor girl alone. So sometimes it's a young, a young man that, that make a, 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 a girl pregnant and it becomes court case. I always say, no, no, leave it with me. I'm going to take care of this. Normally, I have a particular kind of, kind of um, um, uh, uh, a fund. I, will use, I use the name fund. For those kind of when once your daughter or you yourself you're pregnant you give birth we go shopping for you we go we ask you what do you need and we go shopping for you that's how i've been running ministry and that's why god has blessed what i'm doing and in fact more of the blessing is even yet to come i love people i love people I'm willing, I'm available for people. So I'm not going, that's why I said to you, I'm not going to criticize you, judge you, this, that, that, that. No, there's a place, there's no place for that in, 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 
with my life and office. I don't have any time for that. Why did you go and lay down for this sake of a dog and all of that? And now you are having more babies, all kind of... No, no, I don't have time for that. Children need to be careful. That's why I said instead of our body, bring the baby. We are not we are not many in the world yet. We are just seven billion people. I need more people on this earth. And last night God was sharing with me that He wants more people on the earth. Scientists will tell you, we are already too many here. No, 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 we don't have enough food. It's a lie. There's enough food, enough house, enough land, enough money for everybody here in this planet. There's enough for everybody. Even if we are 20 billion people on this planet, there is enough. If we are serious, there is enough. Go and look at how much food we throw away in America or Canada and Europe. Go and look at how much we throw away in a day. And how much we eat in a day. And you will know there is enough for everybody here. There is so much food here. It is unreal. And you go to some places in the world, India, Africa, Middle East, some part of Eastern Europe, etc., and there are no food. Elderly people are abandoned. Children are not cared for. I want to raise children. I want to raise millions and billions of children around the world. I want to raise up women who will know their rights and privileges. And not be buzzed about and tossed about by men. And by the will of the devil. Because whenever there is war and there is conflict in the world, it's always women and children who pay the price for it. And this is true. The men died quicker than the women. Because the men always want to do more. They want to be more. They want to do that. They don't have time to relax, time to think. They always want to go, 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 go. Until they don't even know they have high blood pressure. They have hypertension. They are, they are diabetic. They don't know. And boom, they fall down and die. And next thing they call me and say, which has slapped somebody and killed somebody. Or a ghost has slapped somebody and killed somebody. No, it's not a ghost. It's high blood pressure. That has been piling up or stress killed. And that's why the, the women at least are talking about how they feel, what they are thinking. The men are not even dealing with it. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants me to care for children. So I need people who will who will sacrifice thousand dollar offering write a good check to our ministry god is talking to some people to send five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars two hundred one hundred fifty whatever to our ministry so that we will be able to do ministry in kenya and from kenya we'll go to other places because that's the will of god in heaven that's his will now let's go in to talk about the will of the father the will of the Father in heaven is for us to build heaven on the earth. That's why he said to the human being, Adam and Eve, subdue, replenish, dominate, rule. He did not say leave. Go and read it. He didn't say leave. He said rule. It's something that rulership is something you do till the day that you are recalled and reassigned. If Jesus tarry. He did not you see leadership. Somebody choose you to put you in leadership. Rulership is a divine right. It's a divine right. You are appointed to rule, but you are chosen to lead. People choose you to lead. And that is why they can also remove you. If you are a world-class ruler, 
you are appointed by God and you know that is his will and what do you do you can never be removed by human beings nor be stopped by devils that's why your marriages because you don't know you see satan is the world's greatest religious leader satan is a religious leader if you didn't know you know it there's nobody who understands ceremonies rituals and false worship like lucifer nobody there's nobody who is a master psychologist sociologist psychoanalyst like lucifer nobody that's why you need the holy ghost to counter him because that's the only person in your life that can counter what is fake i'm, I'm being real Lucifer is a killer and want to kill babies. Want to make people's life even harder than it is already. Our job is to turn hardship to luxury. To turn poverty to riches. Our job is to turn sickness to health. Permanent health. These things should be permanent. Our job is to turn wretchedness, sorrow, sadness, unhappiness, to turn it around. We want to see loving people, joyful people, happy people. Why? Somebody got clothes to wear, got food to eat, has a future. I want along the way we'll be able to start small, small businesses for these women. And men who qualify. I want to see children from preschool, you know, from preschool to universities to colleges. And they are on their own. And they are doing very well. And they are born again, delivered, spirit filled, and have great job, any great incomes in the world, and become world rulers who knows how to lead and leaders who knows how to rule. Please join me in this effort. It's the will of God that you change things. The power has been given to you when Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are fulfilling Bible prophecy. You become born again. The main reason you become born again is not to go to heaven. Please let me make this very clear to you. The main reason why you become born again is to bring heaven to the earth. Please write that down for me. Berlin, are you there with me? Yes, Bishop. Yeah, I want you to write that down for me. That the main reason why we become born again, why God give us the opportunity and privilege to be born again, be baptized with the Holy Ghost, be delivered, is not just to go to heaven. Go to, going to heaven is just one tiny aspect of it. The bigger and major reason is to make earth to become like heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why there are things that you are meant, your spouse should do. You just look the other way. I'm not talking of evil that should be compromised. I mean, there are things that should be talked about and be solved. Because every problem a human being creates, humans should also resolve it. Solve it. Our job is to make our homes to be like heaven. There's nothing like uh, we are not, uh, we are not, uh, 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 there's nothing like irreconcilable differences. Did you not know that both of you are different? When you keep having sex with each other, keep fooling each other, that is going to be all right. Everything going to be fine. Are you serious? 
that we can be different, but we can make it. Who tell you that you can be different and you make it? You never make it. There must be the spirit of understanding and the gift of sensitivity before you can make it. Now let me let me give you this. For you to make heaven to exist in your relationships or to exist in your marriages, for you to make heaven to be available on the earth, you must be qualified. What qualifies you for a marriage or relationship is when you understand the spirit of the other person. That's number one. Number two, when you exercise, both of you exercise the spirit of understanding. And number three, when both of you, um, those are the two, knowing the spirit of the person and having the, 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 the spirit of understanding is what qualify you for uh, for relationship and, from, and for, for relationship. Now, what in your marriage is one thing. Is those two plus what in your marriage is a, a good relationship that will be solid. Is those two plus the gift of sensitivity. That's the will of the Father. So it's not enough to say, I just want a man. I just want God to give me a godly man. Full of the Holy Ghost. People of God, you will have a man full of the Holy Ghost. And by the time he enters into your life, the Holy will live and the Ghost will remain. And you will see problems like you've never seen before. Ha <laughs> ha! Excuse me. You will see problem like you've never seen before. Uh, let me close out something here. I don't know what this is. Okay, let's continue. So it's not enough to ask for that. You should ask for the whole package. But make sure you know the spirit of the person. Make sure there is the spirit of understanding. And number three, make sure that you earn it by the gift of sensitivity. That's the, that's the will of God. The will of God is for you to be happy. Anybody who tells you that there is no happiness on earth, no joy on earth until you go to heaven, then why is the Holy Ghost here? The Holy Ghost is here. Let me tell you why the Holy Ghost is here. Berlin, write it down. The Holy Ghost is here to assist anyone who desires it to create a heaven on the earth. Hallelujah! That's why the Holy Ghost is here on the earth. Please write that down for me. The reason the Holy Ghost is here is to assist those who are willing to create a heaven on the earth. To change what Satan has done. To change what human beings have done. What they have done against other human beings. Against your life. Don't settle. That's why the Holy Ghost is here. Is to bring a change. Hallelujah. Let's make sure from today, let's make sure that the will of the Father happens on the earth. If you come to a community, there are no flowers planted outside. There are no trees. Plant a tree. Plant flowers. Make the place beautiful. Don't say because nobody did it, you will not do it. I mean, in my, in my mind, and in my spirit, I know how I want to, in the how that I want to live permanently, I know what, how, what I want to create, how I want it to be, so that I can function and I'll be happy. Do things that will make you to be happy. 
Next thing, it is the will of God for you to be healed. That's what we are doing this morning. The wound that was afflicted on Jesus is what we call God's medicine. That's the supernatural medicine that has been provided for humanity to tap into. This is how I receive my healing. Let me, let me show you how I do it because it's one thing for pastors to talk about things without demonstrating it. I make my hand like this and I put my right hand on my belly. My belly is where my spirit person lives. He dwells there. That's where my second brain is. So I put my hand there or sometimes I do it I lift up my right hand and I put my left hand on my belly and say, Father, I activate my spirit in the Holy Ghost. I enter into the flow of the Holy Spirit and I receive all the greatness, all the joy, all the peace, powers. I receive all the love. I receive all his fruits as gifts and gifts as fruits. I stay up within me his giftedness that he has gifted me for me to function as a Christian and also as a prophet shepherd of the people of God. I'm always willing and available. I stayed up within me the money that God has deposited in my spirit to comfort the children, the sons and daughters that he has given to me. I stayed them up to come up. Excuse me. There we go. Mm -hmm. I stay up. I stay up every children he has given to me to be a father to them from every nation of the world. Every good thing in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14 are in my spirit. I call them to come forth. Every idea that will make me successful, I stay them up in the Holy Ghost. Every human being who have been called and connected with me for me to tap into their giftedness and for them to tap into mine, I release them. See, I continue to say this. I continue to say this. I continue to say this. There is no dream fashioned against me that will prosper. Because inside me is the Holy Ghost. My spirit in the Holy Ghost, in Christ Jesus, is more powerful than any witch. I am the big bully on the block. I bully witches. I bully any form of wickedness in my neighborhood. Why? Because I have the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Ghost. I have Jesus in me. The Father is stirred up in me. And then I begin to pray. Now listen carefully to how I pray for healing. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Lord, with my two hands, I touch your wound, Jesus. The wounds on your back. Because people are going to let me tell you something. If you see Jesus, you will still, still see the scars on his hand where the big nails went in and on this side. You will still see the bruises of the thorns on his head. And the beating that he received, you will still see the scars on his back. He's still there. And then you will see the scars on his foot and where he was pierced. So you can touch him on those places. And I will say something like this. With my spirit, I believe. I'm not speaking out of my mind. With my spirit, I speak and I believe this. Jesus, you are willing to heal me. Or you are willing to heal this partner that I'm about to pray for. And when once I begin to speak like this, I begin to speak in tongues. 
I burst out into tongues that some of my tongues is like every day I speak a different tongue. It's, it, let, let me share with you what is going on with me. It's like if I'm praying, say, I'm praying for Gillian, or I'm praying for Chantel, or I'm praying for, 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 for Alexis, or I'm praying for Vadim, or I'm praying for Beatrice, or I'm praying for Pam, or I'm praying for whoever, whoever, or for Kishan. Each of these people, I will be speaking a different tongue for on behalf of each of them. I don't know why so. And, and I know why, to some extent, is that I'm ministering to different people in the supernatural. And I will say something like this, Lord God, Lord Jesus, you are my beloved. Holy Spirit, you are the love that exists between the Father and the Son. And Jesus, you are the beloved Son. You are my beloved. If you were here, I will hold you and hug you. And I will place the biggest and the fattest kiss on you. I will want to do anything for you. I am so impressed and honored to be yours and you to be mine. How can I walk away from you with all this opportunity and privileges you've given to me? I am here right now. I'm here right now with you. And I touch you. At that time, I lift up my hand like this. I say, I touch your back. I touch those wounds. I touch that scar. I touch the one on your hands. I will just say wherever I want to touch him. Because that is medicine. People of God, the reason why you need to run after Jesus is because he is hospital. He's pharmacy. He's pharmacology. He's medicine. He's the shop, the surgery that you need. So you say to him, I touch you. And at that point, if my spirit doesn't kick in, I use my imagination. There's what we call supernatural imagination. And I'll begin to imagine Jesus standing before me. And I'm touching his back. Remember that woman that says, if I could, and this was before Jesus was even crucified. In Mark chapter 5, before Jesus was crucified. Before he had all those beatings and all those sufferings, that the woman said, let me just touch his, his outer garment, his prayer cloth. The fringe is on his rabbonic prayer show. And I'll be healed and she was healed. How much more now that Jesus was crucified, risen from the dead? How much more? So you will see me, I will close my eyes or open my eyes and focus on, on Jesus. I touch you. I touch you, my honor. I touch you, the one that healed me. You are my medicine. I touch you and I am healed. I'm saying this from my spirit, not from my mind. I believe that I'm healed. Oh, I believe that this so and so partner is healed as I speak now. The word I'm speaking, they become spirit and life. They leave my mouth and they turn into things. And they go to wherever that person is and enter into that person and heal the person. See, people of God, that's how I pray. And this thing becomes real. I have been praying sometime with Jesus and imagine that a partner of mine, I, I, I imagine that partner driving a new car or that partner being given a new office. And that very day that I zoom into that, it happened the same day. Or sometime while I'm with Jesus, I will simply say something like, 
I bring this person's mind and imagination under my feet in Christ Jesus, and it happens. For so some so person. If your husband is giving you trouble, I will bind and bring his mind and imagination under your feet. People of God, let me tell you something. Because of Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father, and because of the ministry of angels, because of the anointing that is upon me, and the glory of God that comes to visit me, God is capable through me to solve your problem. God is capable. So tell people about what Jesus is doing through me. And, and let them come. Because their problems will be solved. This is true. This is not a joke. Amen. Excuse me. This thing works. This thing works. If people are going to, to, to the devil... And they are receiving temporary solution. Why do you think that when people come to Jesus, they should not receive permanent solution? This morning, Jesus, we come before you. With our spirit, we receive. Whether it be money, whether it be healing, like this morning is healing. Everyone who are sick, Wherever you are sick, touch that place. As I begin to, and begin to say to Jesus, I touch you. Please unmute your phone and begin to pray and say, I touch you, Jesus. Heal me. I touch your wound. Heal me. You are my medication. I receive you. I receive you. By receiving you, I have received God's medicine. Begin to say so. Hallelujah. If you say so, you don't need to say much. That's just it. I don't care whether it happens now or whether it happens tomorrow. I have received it. The, the shot, the, the, the tablet has been applied. And that's it. It's happened. I believe that it has happened. Because you've asked for it. You've walked into the presence of the king. And you've touched his scars. His wounds. You're healed. Father thank you. Thank you. Thank you that this thing works. In Jesus name. Amen. People of God you can call me. For those of you who live. Outside the U.S. and Canada, call our ministry for your healing. If somebody is attacking you, tell them that they have made the, the biggest fool of themselves by trying to attack you or to trying to stop you. Tell that person that they've made the biggest blunder. The reason is this. If you run to me for protection, whoever is attacking you will be attacked severely. What will attack them? They, they have no idea. They will be running for cover. I'm serious. If you run to me for protection, you are good. You're good to go for the rest of your life. Anybody who is trying to attack you has made the, the biggest blunder of their lives. Because they will lose their life. Because of you. If you want me to show you where it is, I will show you in the book of Isaiah. He said, I give people in exchange for your life. There is what my people call who is an evil person who is on the, on the phone line. Tell, tell the people what it means. What's the meaning of that? Anybody who speaks Igbo from Nigeria or something. Okay, let me tell you the meaning. It means whoever has decided to come and kill me will kill himself first. That's how it is. Anybody who decides to eliminate you will be eliminated first. And you will never be eliminated. Everybody in your company, if your company decides to sack everybody, to fire everybody, they will fire everybody except you. They will retain you. 
Yeah. Yep. If you put, if you, if you, if you set up a trap for a buffalo, let me tell you what happened. The buffalo will pass by, but will never enter the trap. And we will make sure that grass grow in that place, and you come to walk by, and you are with your own trap within the grass will get a hold of you. We hear you shouting, oh! People will be asking what is happening. You said I've been caught by my own trap. Anybody who want to set a trap for you, a trap will appear and trap the person. Okay. Yep. Anybody who decides to make you poor, poverty will hit them. When it happened to them once or twice, they will all flee. It's like I watched something about a, a, a pack of lions trying to, to, to get one big buffalo. This one-eyed buffalo came and hit one of the lions or lioness so hard that the entire buttocks broke off. When they raised head, the pain of this lion crying in pain and dead about to take out the rest of them because they didn't want any more meal they ran let me tell you i have armed an angel on your behalf a violent and aggressive angel on your behalf he has been armed to watch over you let anybody try anything Tell them to bring it on. Bring it on. If you want to fight, you're going to get it. If you want peace, you will have it. But if anybody envy you, is jealous of you, they don't want you to become anything, well, it will start with them first and foremost. And the one I like best is when they are having a meeting about you and suddenly a voice come from heaven and said, Stop that meeting! Everybody! Oh! The voice of the Father or the voice of Jesus or the voice of the Holy Ghost or a voice of an angel, a violent and aggressive angel come forth and everybody on the run. Or, or while they are having their meeting, they are not supposed to hear the name Jesus while they are having their meeting against you. The name comes Jesus, and everybody on the run. <laughs> what did the Bible say? At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. bow. My God. <laughs> and then they begin to, to, to kill each other because they will think. This person is betraying us. Why? They make a plan. And the, the plan is supposed to take place in the morning. But after they finish making their plan, something happened and destroyed the plans. It's like a chicken laid an egg. And they were waiting for the, chick, for the baby chick to come out. And the baby chick died inside the egg. Ah, that's my specialization. I kill evil before they take root. That's what happened. This is pure power. Please ask those people whom I've asked to, to walk through their cities and take authority and tell the gods and goddesses in their cities that they are the rulers over the cities. Tell, let them tell you what happened. Some of the people, it was bright and beautiful and sunny. Immediately they walked into the street and began to say, I am warning all the gods and goddesses in this land that I'm now in charge. Suddenly rain began. Suddenly a mighty wind began. That's what people were calling me to tell me. From England to Germany to Switzerland to Italy to Portugal to Spain, African nation, Middle East, England, America. People walked into the street. I'm taking over this city and suddenly rain began. Suddenly wind began to, to, to come from everywhere. Everywhere. 
You think that these things are not there. They are there. Jesus is the package while we do what we do. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your job is to clear devils and bring in angels. <laughs> if you want to, to, to contribute to our charity, you want to contribute to the Kenyan project, that's what we call it, the Kenyan project. If you want to contribute also to our um, our uh, East Coast one-on-one -on -one with uh, Bishop Itikai Mary. We are looking forward to people who can uh, 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 provide the um, the ticket down there. Um, I want to fly down there. I'm getting too young to, to, to drive a long way. So I want to travel. If there are those of you who want to contribute to hotel accommodations and all those things, please. That would be nice. Just just call me and tell me you want to. If you want to fund tickets, round trip, back from Maryland, from Wichita to Maryland and from Maryland back here, that would be nice. I would really, really appreciate it. We will be. I mean, that would be that would be much appreciated. I am very, very proud of you. Uh, that whenever we tell you the needs we have here, you always show up. It's not every time we ask for, for help, no, it's not. So I look forward to seeing all of you tonight for Deliverance Night. I look forward to seeing it's going to be a night that I'm, I'm always enjoying being with you wherever you are in the world. I'm always enjoying hearing your voice or seeing your face on Skype for those of you who want to talk to me on Skype or you want me to minister to you through Skype. And... Um, Tomorrow, we begin the seven days of sitting on the mat for you. Please, if you want me to do that for you, please call in within the next 48 hours and attach an offering. God bless you. I love you. I care about you. And I'll be seeing you tonight. And also remember tomorrow morning for the church service at 9 a.m. Central Time. Tonight, 9 p.m. Central Time. Everything is Central Time. And also tomorrow night for the Achievers and the Winners meetings. Thank you, uh, all of you who are calling in from other nations, and um, I will talk to you soon. God bless you. This is Bishop Idikai Mary saying to you, with God, Vadim, help me here. Where are you? Come on now. Where are you? Good. Amen. Good. Bye. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful meeting to this morning. <laughs>